I'm Derek Burkholder. And I'm Mike Heithouse. This is an overview of the work that we did with our colleagues Jim Forkren, also from Florida International University, Aaron Worsing of University of Washington, and Larry Dill of Simon Fraser University that was published in the Journal of Animal Ecology. Around the world, populations of large marine species like sharks, sea turtles, and sea cows have been declining. While restoration efforts for sea turtles are starting to work in some locations, shark populations continue to be overexploited. Since 1997, the Shark Bay Ecosystem Research Project has been studying the dynamics of the relatively pristine seagrass ecosystem of Shark Bay, Western Australia. Our work is focused on how tiger sharks, as the top predator, might play an important role in structuring the ecosystem and initiate trophic cascades. An interesting component of the work is that we focused on how sharks might initiate trophic cascades by changing the behavior of large herbivores like sea turtles and sea cows called dugongs. Our previous studies have shown that the presence of tiger sharks causes major changes in both how and where large herbivores forage in Shark Bay. The goal of this study was to find out if those behavioral changes cascaded to the seagrass itself. We put out large exclosure cages to keep turtles and dugongs from feeding in areas along the edges of banks, which are a safer place for them to be, and in the middle of banks where the risk from tiger sharks is highest. We left the cages in the water for about two years and monitored the seagrass inside. Our results suggest that tiger sharks are helping structure the seagrass community of Shark Bay. Basically, seagrass communities didn't change in areas where sharks were already keeping grazers from feeding. But in areas where risk was lower and turtles and dugongs could feed more readily, seagrass communities changed dramatically when we kept grazers out. The seagrass became very dense and basically grew up to the top and the edges of the cages. Except where turtles could reach their heads in and grab a quick bite. When we removed the cages, the seagrass quickly was grazed down. Together, these data suggest that having tiger sharks in Shark Bay helps to facilitate dense, highly structured seagrass beds in the middle of banks where risk is high for grazers. At the same time, they cause heavy grazing pressure in areas where risk is lower. But the grazers don't totally wipe out the seagrass even in safer areas. That's different from other areas of the world where shark populations have dropped dramatically. In those areas, increasing turtle populations can cause the collapse of entire seagrass beds. Overall, our work suggests that roving predators like tiger sharks could induce trophic cascades through changing the behavior of their prey, and likely are a very important component of their communities. That means that conservation and management plans for coastal oceans and other ecosystems should consider the potential importance of behavioral impacts of predators on their prey. Also, we probably need to be thinking not just about protecting what's left of shark populations, but actually restoring them. <laughs>